Lies in shine children wish the bubbly cheerful teacher to her class hope you all are doing great smiling children from the laptop screens answer miss we all are hail and hearty then the teacher says we have learned about earth and its exterior and interior movements right then one of the students named twisha replies yes miss we did learn about volcanoes and earthquakes so now i have divided all of you in groups of 3 and i will be giving you a case study related to earthquakes that has occurred in the various places of the world and you will be exploring more about it and presenting the information to your friends in the next class seminar wow that's so exciting says ayush meanwhile twisha ayush and shorya create a whatsapp group where they message each other ayush hey friends we have got the topic of the gujarat earthquakes and i have a very fantastic idea to share twisha yes ayush ayush tomorrow be ready at 11 am in the morning and i am going to introduce you to someone who will help us do the project twisha all right the next day all the group members join the google meet meet her she is my grandmother and he is my grandpa introduce ayush to all his friends now you all must be thinking how they are going to help us in our project arts ayush my grandparents live in bhuj and as you all know that the gujarat earthquake 2001 is also known as the bhuj earthquake they have experienced the earthquake you can ask them whatever you want they will help us with that topic such a pleasure meeting both of you said twisha could you share with us how your experience was sure children it was 26th january 2001 8:46 am in the morning just like an ordinary day we were doing our routine household work but then suddenly we felt as if our house was shaking and everyone started screaming and yelling for help bada jaldi bahar aao bhookamp aayo che the grandmother said really goosebumps run down the spine remembering that morning grandpa exclaimed sadly Though we lived in the outskirts of the Kutch district, we didn't face Albert Toys as it was affected to the village of Bhuj and Anjer, closest large cities to the epicenter. Only one out of ten buildings could withstand the tremor. The, the epicenter was about nine kilometers in the uh, in the village of Chobari in Bauchwa Taluka. I remember. when we studied that the point inside the earth's crust where the pressure is released is called the focus and the point on the earth's surface above the focus is called the epicenter so that means bhuj district suffered the most severe damage caused by the earthquake because it happened close to the epicenter am i right grandpa asked twisha ha dikra sachu bole che life was so tough seeing all the debris around I still remember the news report that was being flashed all over the news channels. The powerful earthquake that has struck here has been the most damaging earthquake in the last 5 decades in India. It has caused a large loss of life and property. Over 18,600 people were reported to be dead and over 1,67,000 people were injured. The number of deaths is expected to rise. with more information coming in the estimated economic loss due to this quake is placed at around rupees 22000 crores the quake was felt in most parts of the country and a large area sustained damage about 20 districts in the state of gujarat sustained damage the entire kutch region of the gujarat enclosed on three sides by the great run of kutch the little run of kutch and the arabian sea sustained the highest damage with the maximum intensity of shaking as high as x on the msk intensity scale several towns and large villages like bhuj anjer wond bachau sustained widespread destruction 
The other prominent failure in the Kutch region include extensive liquefaction, failure to several earth dams of up to 20 meter height, damage to masonry arc and ashi bridges, and failure to railroad and highway embankments. was caused at the conversion plate boundary which was between the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate boundary. This pushed together and caused the earthquake. The Indian plate subducted beneath the Eurasian plate. Yesterday, I researched about the Burj earthquake and found out that the magnitude of that earthquake was 7.9 on the Richard scale. Not only was the life of the people disturbed, but 80% of water and food resources were destroyed. Over a million structures were damaged. As a result, local resources were used as a high scale in order to rebuild and repair the region. The area was once India's most visited region by tourists outside central cities. However, after many old historical buildings were destroyed, the element of economy was destroyed. The grandmother said in a shaky tone of voice. Hearing that, Tuisha adds, The Burj earthquake was a big earthquake, which was comparable in terms of magnitude and energy which released in the great 1906 San Francisco earthquake. Thank you Ayush, Grandpa and Grandmother. You all have helped us so much. I think we can now prepare well for our topic. The presentation day approaches and all the team members present their topics in the seminar. The earth is so kind and lovely, mountain, plain and valley. All of them come together to make a pleasant weather. But this planet is being polluted. Well, it should be protected. We will realize our mistake by volcano, flood and earthquake. Reduce, reuse, recycle should be followed for our survival. This earth can remain green, healthy, beautiful and clean. All the children are exalted as their vacations have started. One day, they decide to video call each other. Hello, Manveer and Sanat. Finally, our vacations have started, Harshita said triumphantly. Hello, Harshita. Isn't it a good idea if we start working on our IDSD project? Replied Manveer. Yeah, we should, exclaimed Sanat. Right you are, Nibi. But in these times, um, how should we collect information? Harshita questioned. I think you must go to the library where we can find various books to research on our topic. Sanat re replied in a redolent manner. Hmm. Sanat is right, Manveer. What do you think? Questioned Harshita. Yeah, I completely agree. We should go to the library, proclaimed Manveer. So, let's go to the library tomorrow. I'll call my other friends too. The next day, they visit the library where they read engrossing facts about hot springs. Aman rushes to his friends to tell them what interesting facts and information he got. He said, Hey mates, look what I found. Hot springs are formed because of the magma and the cracks on the earth's surface. The heat from inside of the earth turns these naturally formed lakes into hot springs. While rippling through the pages searching for accelerating facts, Harshita said, Did you know that we have hot springs in our locality too? For instance, Unai Hot Springs in Navsari. Have a look at this video of Unai Hot Springs.
Unai Hot Spring has a famous temple of Lord Ram and Goddess Sita. This temple is said to be around 6,000 years old, related to the Ramayana times. This temple is also very old and ancient. Therefore, this place has a lot of religious significance. Manveer added, Furthermore, Manikaran hot springs are the best hot springs in Himachal Pradesh. The place also has mythological importance and the people in Himachal believe that this place used to be the abode of Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati for 1100 years and the locals believe that the water turned hot due to Shiva's anger. In the long summer vacations, children explore more about the hot springs and the natural geyser. After schools reopen, they decide to discuss more about the topic with their teacher. Good afternoon everyone. We all are here to have a discussion on the topic, is hydrotherapy a blessing? So let's just proceed with the discussion. Harshita, we can start with you. If there is magic on this planet, it is contained in water, as said by Lauren Isley. We all agree that water is an astounding gift of nature. Our life would be impossible without it. It helps all living beings to function. It helps us in our daily chores and has therapeutic benefits. Hydrotherapy also known as hydropathy, a water cure is the use of water to maintain health or for treatments of medical conditions such as arthritis, back or body aches, insomnia. Hydrotherapy differs from swimming because it involves special exercises that you do in a warm water pool. Hydrotherapy is an outstanding treatment for several conditions. However, it has disadvantages too. So, today we are going to discuss pros and cons of hydrotherapy and some precautions too. So, let's begin. Who would like to contribute first? Alright, let's begin with what Erna has to state. Thank you, Ashita. I believe hydrotherapy is a blessing as it has helped many people to recover from pain. It increased circulation, we loosen up stiff muscles and joints and thereby provides ease. The hydrostatic pressure of water helps to reduce the swelling and exercise pain. It also improves balance and coordination and increases our feelings achievement even in the acute stages. As the sprain joint is treated with this therapy, the pain subsides, which allows the patient to slowly regain the strength under water. The warmth of the water relaxes at ease and helps you to exercise. So friends, now I am going to tell you about arthritis and how arthritis is solved by hydrotherapy. Arthritis is a swelling in your joints and the main symptoms of arthritis are jo joint pain and stiffness. The warmth of the water allows your joints to relax, eases the pain of your joints. The water helps to relieve pain and increase the range of movement of your joints. Third point is, the water can be used to provide resistance to your joints who want to contribute Yes, Sanat, you may continue. There are also some cons. So, I would like to the, tell the con that, that one of these is cardiac instability. It occurs due to the abnormal or the unstable blood pressure, which can cause inadequate blood flow to our organs. People putting prolonged hydrotherapy treatments have more chances to experiencing cardiac instability. Due to the fact that hydrotherapy has some disadvantages, I don't think we need to forestall its practice. I consider we shouldn't do that because I have got you a list of precautions for each consumer and provider to enjoy hydrotherapy safely. 
First, those who opt for hydrotherapy shall drink plenty of water and keep themselves hydrated. They should wear loose fitting clothes to prevent heat exhaustion. The water is to be changed after each batch of hydrotherapy to prevent the spread of waterborne diseases. Next, to prevent falls or slips, the pool surroundings need to be maintained as dry as possible. Next, to uh, save you from uh, skin irritation, the pH of the pool needs to be managed. Anybody who would like to contribute? Yes, Sadhana, please contribute. Thank you, Hatsata. I would like to add up a few more, few more precautions taken during hydrotherapy. We should mind the temperature of water because water has a heat capacity thousand times greater than air and transport speed 25 times faster. Water which is too hot can cause severe burns to our body. The temperature of water also should be regulated based upon the individual's tolerance capacity. Even the treatment should be concluded with a full application. The amount of time the hot and cold water is applied to may vary. Thank you to each and everyone who has contributed. From my point of view, hydrotherapy is a blessing for the people. It has numerous advantages which can cure several diseases. For instance, the relaxation promoted by the hot water cures arthritis. Moreover, it often improves mental health. As a result, the warm water helps our body relax, which benefits various aspects of health and helps relieve pain. On the other hand, if done inappropriately, it may cause various side effects like skin irritation, heat exhaustion, cardiac instability. All in all, if hydrotherapy is used appropriately with necessary precautions, it may not be risky. Therefore, it is a beneficial method and is a blessing for the people. After a few days, the students receive a message from school saying that the school is organizing a 30 days educational tour for class 7 students. We were elated to see the brochure on which was mentioned that they'll visit Indonesia, Japan, Hawaii, USA, Iceland and Turkey as a part of their IDSA project where they discover nature's miracles on the cruise 7 SR. After two days and two nights sailing to the Arabian Sea, diving into the waters of the Indian Ocean, cruise 7 SR has finally reached the island nation of Indonesia. Sell a mad the tang to all the students of SI International School, said Dave, the tourist guide. Sama Sama, we welcome all of you to the Indonesian archipelago. Yes, we did a lot about Indonesia during our IDSA research and now we want to know about the solitary Kelet and Mount Merapi, the active volcanoes of Indonesia. Hearing to that, Dave the tourist guide nodded his head and said, Indonesia has a great number of volcanoes. 147 volcanoes in total, out of which 76 of them are the active roaring volcanoes spread along the islands of Sumatra, Java, Celebs and Lesser Sunda. Yes, we also heard that all the volcanoes of Indonesia are located on a 3000 km long chain also known as the Sunda Arc. Mm, isn't it right? Inquired Dridima. Yes, yes, you're right, said Dave the guy. So, what are we waiting for? Look out, that's Mount Merapi. Dave the guy. There's an island called Babel Island in Andaman and Nicobar Island, which consists of the only active volcano found in South Asia. It is an inhabited island, so there's no tourism like Bali. Oh yes, I even read a hooking book which elucidates eruptions like Mount Agam, but you can think of it as a miniature form of Mount Agam with less VEI. It is an inhabited island, so there is no tourism like Bali, said Harshita. Suhani replied, 
Wow! That's so absorbing! I'd love to ponder more about this topic and also learn more about Andamanan and Nicobar Island. Iyani! Students screamed, floating in the air. That's so insanely enormous! Prompt Suhani with her jaw open, flabbergasted and her head high, looking with astonishment at Mount Merapi. These are enthusiastic tourists I said. This type of volcano is 2,958 meters high and it's an active lava dome. By looking at Mount Merapi, I realized that it's countless, conical shape, a layer of hardened lava with composition of volcanic ash makes it a set of volcano. The Tsunami in the tourist character, students, do you know that Mount Merapi is also commonly known as Cherry Mountain as its name has been derived from old Japanese language. And do you know what it means? The one making fire. Oh, noted Suhani or Saturn. Mount Mirapi is considered to be scared by local people. They believe that a supernatural kingdom exists there that gave the tourist cars. Wow, look at those shops. They have the lovely connection of sea cells. I want to buy some. Proclaim Harshita. Many shops near an active volcano. Scratching her head and thinking about it, Harshita says, Active volcano means a volcano that has erupted from past 10,000 years. Moreover, Mount Meripi is situated above the subduction zone between Eurasian and Indo-Australian tectonic plates. It can't blast ash, lava, solid rocks and gases into the air, just like popcorns do while popping out of the out of the pot, creating creatures, hazards, can kill people, disrupt air travel and destroy property many miles away. Yes, aren't the shopkeepers scared about it? Suhani asked with a scowled face. Yes, they may lose their lives, said. Children, come on, let us all take a tour of a shop and find out all the answers to your interrogations, said the, the tourist guide. All the children enter a shop and meet Mr. Shri Sabriwin, the shop owner. Suddenly they hear, Hey friends, look what I found here. Sound Shub holding a paper in his hat. Hello, I am Mr. Shri Sabriwin and this is my shop. And the paper that you are holding is a pamphlet that helps all the tourists to be ready if the volcano erupts and as well as shock blood to the head. Yes, we also made some creative pamphlets during our project said Shub, excited to show them. Shri, the shopkeeper, holds the pamphlet and explains that students, when you are visiting a volcano, you must always remember to listen to the local station on portable battery operating radio or television for more updated information and instructions. Local officials will give the best and the most appropriate advice for a particular situation. Second, follow any evacuation order issued by authorities and put the emergency plan into action. Although it may seem to be safe to stay at your home and wait out an eruption, but if you're in a hazard zone, doing so would be very dangerous. Third, if indoors, close all doors, windows, and dampers to prevent volcanic ash from entering. Cover all machineries in garage or bank. Or, if no buildings are available, then cover it with glass caps. Fourth, also bring animals and livestock indoors to protect them from breathing harmful volcanic ash. But if we are outside an eruption, will not set. Fourth, seek shelters if, those, if possible. Second, we must also stay out of designated restricted zones. Effects of a volcanic eruption can be experienced from many, many miles away from a volcano. Third, avoid low lying areas, area downwind of a volcano, and river valleys downstream of a volcano. Ash and debris will be carried by wind and gravity. Fourth, stay in areas where we will further not be exposed to any other volcanic eruption hazards. Trying to watch an erupting volcano 
is a daily idea added to share as an experience. Staying safe after a volcanic eruption is important too. If you do nothing else, let friends and family know you are safe. The NADM team will also help you to connect to your families. If evacuated, return only when authorities say to do so. Continue to listening local news or weather radio for updated information and instruction. If people around you are injured, practice check, call care, check the scene to be sure it is safe for you to approach. If you are trained, provide first aid to those in need until emergency responders can arrive. Said Drishya. Visiting the pre-processing Mount Merapi made the trip so enthralling. We could learn so much about it. Said Neil Raj thanking Sri Sabri Vail, the shop owner. Do visit us at Surat whenever you plan for a trip to India. We will be on a ridge of our seats to meet you. Said Neil Raj to Dave, the travel guide. They all clicked a photo and entered the ship. Meanwhile, Amba unwrapped his map, which he painted and shouted, Hey friends, we are at Ring of Fire. Yes, we are, replied Shub. Amba asked, So where are we going next? Let's see where the ship takes us to. The ship sails for the next stop. Is the honor for the people who helped them in the investigation about volcanoes, they made a melodious poem upon their knowledge of volcanoes. When it is unknown to all the people living near, the news goes to every year. The lava will flow like a tear. There would be hustle and bustle and people to fear that the once destructive and active volcanoes will reappear. The magma is going to flow till here. And after some time, it's gonna disappear. It's hard to say when will it burst, but it may come and make the conditions worse. The clouds turn dark, which were once white, which indicates something like a curse, will fall in the darkest night. The lava will flow aggressively by taking each step cautiously. Lava is so angry that it will not see poor or wealthy. The cold black smoke is something which is unhealthy, but in nature it's deadly. But at last, we can say that volcanoes are destructive, but also productive to humankind. Sailing to the South China Sea, Cruise 7 SR has arrived in the island country of Japan. The cruise just waits offshore of Honshu, the Japan's most extensive island. We heard a yoko so the radio gurgle animatedly. Welcome to Japan, the land of rising sun. Japan, an island nation lying off the east coast of Asia, creating the great string of islands, north, east, and southwest arc, that stretches for approximately 2,400 kilometers through Western North Pacific Ocean. Ohaya gozaimasu, I am Shali, the Japanese tourist guide. Introducing himself, he says, Did you know children that Japan is a country steeped with myth and legend? Mr. Shalin. We did learn while doing our research that Japan has 109 volcanoes in different states and Mount Fuji is the highest and most venerated and revered mountain in Japan, standing at 3776 meters tall. Mount Fuji is also perhaps the world's most well-known peak, answered Arav with loads of enthusiasm. Shalin, the tourist guide states, the name Fuji is believed to be derived from Huchi or Fuji, the Aino goddess of fire. Actually, there are many folk tales surrounding Mount Fuji, known popularly as Fuji san in Japan. San meaning mountain.
Ara replied, Mount Fuji is a dormant volcano. At last, it erupted in 1707, about 300 years ago. Does that mean it won't erupt now? Hearing the question, Niharika retorted, Hey Aro, as we learned in our geographic class that dormant volcanoes are those volcanoes which have not erupted for a long period of time, but may allow the new batch of... Niharika enthusiastically explained, Japan is located on the most geologically active part of the globe, the Ring of Fire. The roughly horseshoe-shaped Ring of Fire, which is visible on a world map, circles the South Pacific, the eastern rim of Asia, and the western edge of the Americas. This region is known for its massive volcanic explosions and earth tremors. The tourist guy says, not only is it one volcanic summit, it's three. The mount is three separate volcanoes placed on top of one another. The bottom layer is Komaitek volcano, then the Kofuji volcano, then Fuji, which is the youngest. Mount Fuji has a very distinctive cone shape, which is very uncommon for a volcano, added Siddhi. The first known ascent of Mount Fuji was founded in 663 by Mount. The Mount was commonly climbed by Mai Man. The unique graceful shape of Mount Fuji has sculpted much of Japanese traditions, duration to Japanese poetry, tunes, and art. The artist Katsushika Hokusai has painted 36 views, really mesmerizing, said Naman. Listening to that, Soma narrates, the formation of Mount Fuji is itself a matter of mythology. It has been said that Mount Fuji has been formed in a single day. The story relates the experiences of a woodsman named Visu. He was turned away by well, loud knives seemingly coming under from the earth. The woodsman, believing it to be an earthquake, and grabbed his family and daughter from their home. When he emerged the doorway, he saw the land near his home had been flat and pretty dead. And he was awestruck by this occurrence and the majesty of the mountain. The team knit Fujiyama, the never dying mountain. Well, geologically, Mount Fuji dates back to around 8500 BC. Can you imagine that? This legend places the fabled creation of Mount Fuji in 86 BC. This later date roughly conquers with the geologic track record of an explosive eruption that occurred around this time frame. Well, it is not known what the true source of the myth is. It is not outside the realm of conjecture to suggest that the myth could have been influenced by a aforementioned eruption. What I am saying? Yes, I have also heard about Mount Fuji. It is the origin to many myths and it is also important in the Japanese society. It is home to many deities such as the goddess of Fuji who is the Tenchen and uh, the people or the religious pilgrims who used to visit her temple which was at the right side and the apex of the mountain. She would throw them off the mountain if they had an impure heart. Yes, Ayan, Mount Fuji, Fujisan, or Fujiyama, no matter the name, it is clear that the legendary mountain has been an important part of Japan from time immemorial. Suddenly, students are in all looking at the tall rising columns and roads, metro trains of Japan. They inquire from the people about it. They go to the town planning office where they meet three skilled mechanics, Mr. Hirsch, Mr. Tanush, and Mr. Namal. They describe the construction site. Hirsch explains the structure of houses and schools. Nihaika talks and replies. Tanish explains the structure of roads and transportation. Siddhi replies. Navan explains the structure of public places. Somna concludes and bids Sanara to the engineers. The group thanks Mr. Shalin. Rise and shine to my respective teacher and friends. Today I'll explain the construction of the school in my model. So basically the school and the hospital which you can see in my model is surrounded by a barrier wall. This barrier wall is coated with a layer of tungsten. Tungsten is a metal with a melting point of 5500 degrees Celsius. There's a hospital just beside the school. 
if in case of volcanic eruption takes place and someone gets seriously injured so that person can be provided with immediate treatment of first aid. If people get stuck inside the school as well as the hospital during a volcanic eruption, they can quickly take an exit from the back door or either escape quickly from the ladder. There are special alarms inserted outside the school and the hospital. When the heat from the volcano will reach the alarm, the alarm will quickly ring and the people will get updated that the volcano is going to erupt. Lava destroys everything which comes in its way as it has an extreme temperature of 5000 degrees Celsius. But the barrier wall will give time for the people to escape easily and also will protect the entire area from massive destruction. I'm Hush and today I'm going to explain my model. In my model, it explains air transpiration during a volcanic eruption. In the volcano, I have taken a, a aeroplane uh, which is for luggage and another aeroplane which is for people transportation. So uh, when the, there is a volcanic eruption, the people uh, quickly rush, uh, uh, quickly rush uh, to the planes and start uh, sitting on them. They get a time of an half an hour as as uh, the, uh, there are protect uh, protective barriers around the uh, volcano of uh, made up of titanium. So uh, it will be really safe. Uh, then uh, there is a hospital and also an isolation center. Uh, the isolation center is made for the people uh, who have uh, who have been injured by a volcanic eruption or having an infection. So this is my volcano and I hope you liked it. Thank you. Good morning everyone. Today I Aditya will going to tell you about my model. So my model name is how pumice absorbs lava. First of all I will tell you what is a pumice. A pumice is a type of a grey stone that is very light in weight. It is used as a powder for cleaning and polishing and in larger pieces for rubbing on the skin to make it softer. Now I will tell you how my model works. As you can see in my model, I have placed some pumice plates around the home so that even in the case of the lava eruption, pumice can absorb lava and avoid reaching homes. As you can see in my model, I have also placed a fence for extra protection. Now I will tell you what are the minerals that are present in a pumice rock. So there are 11 minerals that are present in a pumice rock. For example, silicon dioxide, aluminium oxide, sodium oxide, potassium oxide, ferric oxide, calcification loss, uh, calcium oxide, magnesium oxide, titanium oxide, sulfur trioxide, and water. Thank you. Through the Pacific Ocean for five days, Cruise 7 SR has finally reached Hawaii. All the members are awestruck by the beauty of the island. The birds chirping and the sound of the sea waves cheered everyone up. Aloha kakahiaka! I am Talish and I will be your guide for today. Excitedly said Mr. Talish, the tour guide. I welcome you all to the Earth's Paradise, the home to many volcanoes, the one and only Hawaii. Aloha Mr. Talish, we have read a lot about Hawaii and its volcanoes and we finally got to visit for a while, said Dhanvi with excitement on her face. Mr. Talish began, the first discoverers of Hawaii are said to have come from the Marquesas Island in 580. There was also a second migration from Tahiti which began from the year 1280 to 1480. These invaders brought with them the system of Kapu, which, what do you mean by Kapu? interrupted Janusha. Well, Kapu is a system made up of strict rules, continued Mr. Talish. For our art, with willingness to learn, I have heard that the Hawaii Islands were isolated from the other people for a long time. Then, how did the people come to know about it? Mr. Talish replied, that was until 1778. When Captain James first sighted the islands of Oahu, Kanai, and Nihau. But in February 1779, the English navigator returned to discover other islands in the main group, including Hawaii. 
That is interesting. I can't even think how happy he must be on finding the island," said Chum. Mr. Pellis said, uh, "Let us move on." The group moves ahead with the guide when they have a look at shocking news that appeared on a TV of a shop. The Kilowa has just erupted and alert for everyone," said the news reporter Shreya. The group was shocked. "What are we going to do now, Mr. Pellis?" asked Swara with a tense face. The ass at the same time they saw the Hawaiian people worshiping the erupting volcano and females performing the hula dance why are the people scared they are worshiping the erupting volcano with so much dedication why is that as saisha the group was astonished and had many doubts in their mind then we suggested let's just go and ask them Mr. Talish said, "Yeah, I think you all must be curious to know." The group went to the Hawaiian people, and Genosha, with a lot of confusion in her mind, asked the tribal person, "Why are you all worshiping the volcanoes?" "Yes, I have never seen people worship the volcanoes instead of running away from them," said Swara, furthering Genosha's point. Neef, a Hawaiian, replied, "We worship the volcanoes because they were made by our goddess." Pele also known as the goddess of volcano and fire she was the one who created the hawaiian islands and because of her today we live on these sacred islands we worship the volcanoes to pay our respects to the holy goddess chavi with the excitement on her face said oh that is interesting and is it why the dance is to performed this reminds me of my hometown Kangra town at Himachal Pradesh state where people worship Ma Chandi as a burning fire where she is called Jwala ji or Jwala ma a uh, Jwala ma ke temple has been burning natural gas since time immemorial to date there are several legends that speak of her power there is also a story that goes that Jwala ma ki is the Sati Parvati who jumped into the Homa Kunda and Shiva carried her body all over and her body parts started falling one by one the jalamukhi temple at kagra is said to be where her tongue fell said saisha jinosha added spectacular is not the word it seems like a textbook displaying fireworks the nature worshippers have always had such a phenomenon in awe and the eruptions and activities related to it will connect to the hymns and mantras auction Another Hawaiian said, "Hula is a religious dance performed by women to honor our gods and goddesses." We didn't have any written language. It was hula that kept all our stories alive. Hula is not just only a dance; it is the heartbeat of the Hawaiian people. It is a bridge to the past. The stories are depicted by hula. Continue Tanan, another member of the tribe. That sounds amazing and interesting, doesn't it? Said Shreya. Saisha, with the loads of enthusiasm, said, "What if we learn to perform hula dance too? It's an amazing dance form, and there is nothing better that we can do to appreciate their culture." That is a good idea, said Dhandi. This dance has undulating gestures and senses with instrumental music. Let's ask them. So they asked the tribal people. and they said yes and they performed very desirably and interestingly and then they decided to perform this hula dance with the women of the tribe oh
ياتو for teaching us said chavi but this was not it we'd like to know more about your culture if you would said janusha yes i have read a little about uh, the hawaiian culture but it's always good to know more said dhan nee when dragon mug began hawaiian island when became known to other people missionaries and scientists started visiting in 1823 Mr Alice took the Hawaiian island both by land and sea he was also the first person who was non hawaiian to view kilua in action said Shaisha Akshat another tribe member continued Hawaiian island was also observed by the scientists like the party and the commander Charles Wilkes various volcano houses or hotels were built near kilua for the people who visited done Another member extended. Then Hawaii Island was known as a national park. Did I say yes? And this work was done by Jordan Thurston and by Dr. Thomas A. Jacob. On August one, nineteen sixteen, President Woodrow Wilson signed the country the twelfth national park came into existence. It took ten years, but Thurston and Jacob presumably split off. Then it continued. At first, the park consisted only of Kilauea and Mount Loa on Hawaii, and Hainukala and Maui. Eventually, park boundaries extended throughout the years to include Kauai and Kalpana regions in Kilauea and Kahuku and Mona Rainforest on Mount Loa. Hawaii Volcanoes National Park protects 333,000 acres of the island's volcanic wonder. and surviving native plants and animals she has said hawaii volcanoes national park was named a world heritage site by unesco in 1987 isn't that right yeah said mr talesh it was a pleasure knowing about the hawaiian culture and performing the hula dance was so much fun hawaii does actually have a really rich and great history thank you so much for all your time concluded dhanvi Yeah, it was. But we'll have to leave now," said Janusha. Everyone shouted on the top of their voices. "Goodbye, Hawaii!" Saisha asked. "So, where are we heading now?" Swara answered. "Wherever the ship takes us next." Wandering to the North Pacific Ocean, leaving the mesmeric Hawaii Islands, the cruiser Seven Isa lands in San Francisco. Cheerful, vibrant, scorchy morning. USA is just a end training. Welcome to the USA. Said two of the tourists who are heading towards the Yellowstone National Park. Are you all going to the same place? Inquired one of the tourists. Marin says. Hooray! We are also going to the Yellowstone National Park. We want to learn the hot springs and geysers that we learned in our IDC project. Oh. What a sight it would be to watch it in real life! As they reached Yellowstone, they arrived at the counter and bought tickets for the Yellowstone National Park. After entering Yellowstone Park, they were just amazed by the view. As they went along, they were surprised to meet the manager of the park. Hello, kids. I hope you are enjoying your trip till now. Of course, sir. We are having a lot of fun. Checking out the view of the park, and we are still so curious to learn more about the attractive and charming hot springs, geyser, fumaroles, mud pots, etc. Yes, sir. 
We are even delighted to get the opportunity to see the outstanding view of Yellowstone National Park. Okay, but do you know when and why this national park was built? Yes, so we have known that Yellowstone National Park was created on March 1st, 1872. It protected more than 2 million acres of mountain, vibrant geysers and landscapes for the future generations to enjoy it. And so it was built by the Unnecess Us Grant. Wonderful! But do you know what hot springs, geysers and fumaroles are? Fumaroles are vent inside the Earth's surface that emit volcanic gases and steam such as sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide. In the spring, produced by the heated groundwater that rises and comes out from the Earth's crust. I also know that in Yellowstone National Park, it has the Grand Prismatic Spring. Its elevation is up to 2,216 meters. Its temperature is 160 degrees Fahrenheit or 70 degrees Celsius. A mud pot or a mud pool is sort of acidic hot spring of fumarole with limited water. It, it usually takes the form of a pool of bubbling mud. They knew all the information and were very, very happy. Listening to this, they get like surprised and says, You guys have done a fabulous job. You all are very good observers, by the way. Anyway, let's start our adventurous tour. As they were learning more about geysers, hot springs and fumaroles, one of the geysers erupted with loads of water splashing outside. The students were amazed by looking at the view. What an amazing moment it is! Oh wow, what a breathtaking view! The third student was shocked by seeing the eruption for the first time in his life. Suddenly, Akshat remembers the last trip to Japan and says, Last time I visited Japan, the roads, buildings and schools can build new volcanoes. It can be done here too. I wish it can. Oh, I think you will get all the information by having a look at these beautiful models. Students, people in these areas have difficult lifestyle. Their homes are in this manner. As you know, their eruptions of hot springs and geysers are frequent. So their homes are made up of strong wood which keep their homes fixed even if there is a small eruption. They even have basements at the bottom of their homes which keep them safe from the eruption. In their homes, there are security alarms which ring when hot springs and geysers start erupting. There are emergency exit doors at many parts of their home and even at the basement to make them feel protected. And you can even find schools, hospitals, parks over here too. Transport systems in urban cities are very busy. They regularly get crowded with a crowd of people and that's what our model depicts. In urban areas, the most used transport systems are buses and metros. People generally travel to their work centers or for shops. have seen an emergency door or an exit in the various transport systems shown in our model. These are generally a safe way to, to exit in an emergency situation, for example, when a geyser erupts. In fact, the travel forecasting models designed by the transport designers assume that people seek ways to accomplish their daily activities in the least amount of travel. This model will tell us how to keep the place clean and make it look attractive. This model will also teach children to avoid bad habits and adults to conserve our environment. Looking at these models, the students were amazed. Wow! These models look so realistic. They are as beautiful as a flower. I love the concept and the way they have built their homes. They have stunning safety measures that keep themselves safe. I would like to experience it. So, how was your adventurous tour? All the passengers loved the tour and learned some more new facts and information about Yellowstone National Park. Meanwhile, one of the students... Sir, can you suggest us some more places where we can learn more about hot springs and geysers? If you want to know more about hot springs and geysers, you will have to solve a puzzle. The hints to solving the puzzle are the place that I am talking about is located in Northern Europe. It is very cold and 
producers and electricity from geothermal energy. SR crosses the Panama Canal and continues its voyage through North Atlantic Ocean. They all were enjoying in the cruise. Ahoy students, how do you do? We are going to a journey to a place which has been not revealed to you. So it's gonna to be a surprise. Oh, means it's gonna be a surprise. We all are agitated to know the place, cried Mithil. Sixteen days passed by. It was day 17 when the captain of the ship says, there's an obstacle. Dear students and respected ma'am, there is a bad news that the fuel in the ship might get consumed. We are trying our level best, but there are chances that we might not be able to reach Iceland in this much time. The people on the ship get worried at once. However, the crew and the captain of the ship managed to reach Iceland. Everyone on the ship, the teachers, the students and the crew members took a sigh of relief when they reached a place. Which is this place? Questioned Mithil. What are those raging and roaring erupting sounds of ma'am? Rajiv continued. When the students saw something erupting nearby, it was a geyser. They started to walk that way and came across a notice board reading beware of geysers. The people moved ahead. They came to a place which looked like a village but which was very developed. Students welcome to Iceland. Introduced for a ma'am and in no time some villagers appeared. Hello ma'am and dear children. Where have you all come from? Asked one of the villagers eagerly. We have come from India to learn more about hot springs and natural geysers. We have set off for a voyage and previously we have visited Yellowstone National Park and the manager over there recommended us to visit Iceland. Welcome to Iceland. I am one of the villagers who stays here in this village. My name is Naman. Meet my friends Dire and Jayant. He said. Yes, yes, we know a lot about them. We know that hot springs and natural geysers are formed by the heat beneath the earth's crust. Mitchell said. Water and groundwater enter through the falls in the porous rocks and start filling with water. The falls start growing bigger gradually. Below the porous rocks are magma chambers which have highly heated molten magma, added Ruthvi. The heat from the magma then heats the water which was getting filled. This forces the water to become steam. The steam gets stored over there for days until one day there is no space for it. It erupts out with some warm water. This is called natural geyser, said Rajiv. Vivek continued. We want to learn how energy is created from hot springs and natural geysers. Why is it called geothermal energy and how does this help the people in the country and why should people visit them? Yes, yes, we know that you all are excited and you also have an amazing knowledge about them. Be patient, we will understand everything in detail, said GA. Children, first we will learn how energy is produced through hot springs and natural geysers. Geothermal power plants near the village use steam to produce electricity. This steam comes from hot water reservoirs a mile or more below the surface of the earth. This steam rotates a turbine which activates a generator. Jan mentioned and the children were stunned. For a ma'am added. Students, this energy is known as geothermal energy. Do you know why? I will tell you, the term geothermal can be divided into two parts, geo and thermal. The term geo means the earth, 
and the term thermal means heat. The students were listening carefully. They helped the country by attracting thousands of tourists from all over the globe. They should be visited by people because it benefits them a lot. Hot spring bathing helps in blood circulation and cell oxygenation, improving the body's digestive and detoxifying capabilities. Soaking in hot water springs can be a great way to naturally detox your skin. Thanks to the high amount of silica in the water, it can also soften rough or dry skin. The magnesium and potassium in this water helps promote healthy skin. Explained Naman. The students were ecstatic after hearing about these hot springs, but also exhausted. So, they thought of having a relaxing bath in a small refreshing hot spring filled with naturally heated warm water. Then they took some glimpses of the beautiful breathtaking views of hot springs and geysers. The next day, they were determined to find a solution to set off to the next destination. They could not find any way out. When the villagers saw them a bit worried, they asked what the matter was. So the students made it clear. The villagers advised them to take help from the nearby gas station. They thanked the villagers for the suggestion. The students and the teachers went to the gas station. There they met Guru Preet, one of the people who worked at the gas station. How can I help you? Do you want a fuel -o vehicle? Then you have came to the right place. I will fuel -o vehicle in no time. He asked them. They told him that they had to refuel the ship. He did it as fast as cheaper. The uh, students and farm ma'am thanked him and got the ship ready for their voyage ahead. Now Group 7 SR has crossed the Mediterranean Sea and is going to arrive in Turkey. The local people address them, Mehrba, welcome to Turkey. The cheerful and excited children replied back to him. Thank you for your warm wishes. The children were very exhilarated to visit this beautiful and diverse country land which has many tourist attraction sites. While they were exploring the country, they saw some strange airports and buildings which were differently designed that they had never seen before. They all were puzzled looking at these buildings. They all were very curious. Krishika then mumbled to everyone, Shall we ask someone about these buildings? Aryan then confidently said, Yes, yes. At the spur of movement, Jia asked, But whom shall we ask? Beside them was a tourist guide who was waiting for someone. Meanwhile, she noticed some children talking among themselves. She tried to figure out what the children were talking about. Suddenly, she heard one of a child talking about a tourist guide. She then thought to help out the children. She went there and introduced herself. My name is is Chetra and I am a tourist guide in Turkey. I love to help people explore this beautiful and rich cultured continent. All the children were glad to meet Chetra the tourist guide. She then continued. Looking at your faces and hearing your conversation, I could know that you all are confused and curious about the earthquake resistant building. All the children said yes. With curiosity, she then addressed the children. Let us explore Istanbul. But before exploring Istanbul, you should know the history of the disastrous earthquake that occurred in Istanbul. Greatest damage in Istanbul was caused by the earthquakes of 1509, 1766 and 1912. It seemed to have been in a magnitude range of 6.8. To 7.2. On 10th September 1509, Istanbul was shaken by a big earthquake. At 4 am, before the people could understand what was happening, the whole city was destroyed. According to the experts, the earthquake in 1509 was one of the biggest earthquakes in Eastern Mediterranean. The second biggest earthquake in Istanbul was in the year 1766 on 22nd May. 
which occurred in the early hours of Thursday morning. Scary noises were heard during the earthquake and a two minute long trek followed them. Then a less intense quake hit the city for four minutes. The aftershocks of this quake were followed by eight minutes. The last big earthquake to affect in Istanbul was in 1912, 9th of August at 3.29 p.m destroying the chimneys, the telegraph poles and the walls. The children were awestruck and Aryan asked how much the people might have suffered during these severe earthquakes. Krishika added, Yes, I can also feel the pain they must have while losing their loved ones. Yes, children, you are right. Now let's explore the city, said Chaitra with a smile. Now they went to explore the earthquake-resistant buildings of Istanbul. Chaitra continued with her explanation. These buildings are built to prevent the collapse of buildings while an earthquake. Mainly there are five things which you should keep in mind while building an earthquake-resistant building. Mainly there are five things which you can understand. Stiffness and strength, regularity, Tendency, foundations and continuous load path. These are the five main elements of an earthquake resistant house. Professionals focus on vertical stiffness and strength as it has to support itself. Buildings shake left and right during the event and if not built properly, then it will destabilize quickly. If the buildings are irregular, then its weakness will become apparent when the building sways. The weakness will be compromised and the whole structure will be seen as concentrated damage. Possibly one of the most important safety characteristics is when designing for safety. Redundancy ensures that there are multiple strategies in case one of the safety fails. It is critical for building long-term survival and a stronger foundation is necessary to resist earthquake powerful forces. Different areas have unique foundational characteristics that define how a structure's base needs to be reinforced. Professionals have to closely observe how the ground reacts and moves before buildings. Buildings designed to withstand violent earthquakes have deep foundations. If this structure is not comprehensively tied together, components will move independently and collapse will be imminent. Children, understanding about the concept of earthquake resistant buildings may be hard for you to understand at this age. So now, let's leave this topic and now we will go to explore the world's largest earthquake proof building which is located on the confluence of three major tectonic plates and is susceptible to earthquakes and therefore houses one of the largest earthquake resistant buildings. The International Airport, the Sabiha Gokan Airport. Wow, so big airport, that also earthquake resistant, Krishika said with excitement. Mrs. Chatra said, yes Krishika, you are right. The largest earthquake proof building. The International Airport Terminal at Istanbul's Saviha Gokan International Airport is complete and open for service. Around 7,000 people work on the construction of the new terminal, stretching across more than 2 million square feet. The terminal doesn't sit directly on the soil but rather on more than 300 isolators. Buildings that can move side to side during an earthquake. The whole building moves as a single unit which prevents damage from uneven forces acting on the structure. The Istanbul project is quite similar to what was done with the San Francisco Airport International Terminal but it is a new version of seismic isolation device. The new terminal is designed to withstand an earthquake as strong as 8.0. The new innovative airport features the largest seismically isolated building in the world, constructed and designed at record speed. 
the new Istanbul airport terminal is the model for the future. And also, Istanbul's builders and planners have to take major earthquake precautions. And the students were amazed. And Vishnu said, Thank you, Ms. Chaita, for helping us explore Istanbul. Krishka added, Yes, ma'am, it was a wonderful experience exploring and learning about earthquake resistant buildings. Then they all went to the port to visit their next destination. While heading towards the ship, the students of Issa International School meet a group of young travelers who seem worried and tense. Hi, we are from Isad International School, Surat, India. We have come on an educational tour to Turkey. You all look so anxious. Has something happened? inquired Anvika. Namaste to you all. We are from A School, Nepal and we are also undergoing an educational tour to Turkey. But due to some issues, we missed our flight to Kathmandu, replied Hia. Oh, not an issue. You can come with us on our ship. Our ship is spacious and will be reaching Surat within two more days, exclaimed Ashwarya. Thank you, but please accept our heartful request and join us in our journey. We all can learn many things from each other. The time will pass shortly, acknowledged Anvika. Saksham then added, after we reach Surat, you can go to Kathmandu through the next flight. They joined them on cruise 7 SR to come back to India. The students were enjoying the voyage on the cruise when one of them started singing. Then the other also continued after. Taking a cue from Indian students, Nepali group also enthralled by singing a popular Nepali song. After a while, the Nepali and Indian students started interacting with each other. All of a sudden, Saksham said, We learned so much about earthquakes in Turkey, isn't it? Hayavatan replied, Yes, do you know our country Nepal is also affected highly by earthquakes? Yes, as Nepal is in the Himalayan region and is located at a highly seismic zone, Pia said. Oh, is that so? Really? Ashwarya exclaimed. Ishanya said, 
Hmm, now I got it. That's why we often experience a lot of earthquakes in Nepal. Listening to this, should be added, there have been many terrible and devastating earthquakes that has occurred in Nepal. One of the most powerful was the 7.8 magnitude earthquake that struck Nepal at 11.56 in the morning on 21st February 2021. The deadly quakes epicenter was in Parpa, which is nearly East Gorka district. The quake was felt in central and eastern Nepal, killing 9,000 people and injuring 22,000 people. That's a lot. After all, I was also one of the victims. Hundreds and thousands of buildings were either destroyed or damaged. Centuries ago, buildings were collapsed. The many heritage sites in Kathmandu Valley also demolished. Saksham with all curiosity asks, Sorry for the interruption. I'm inquisitive. Tell me everything. How did you manage the quake? How you got out of the woods and the entire story of you being the victim? Shubhi replied, It's a long story. I'm sure you wouldn't want to hear it. Saksham then said with a smug smile on his face, 100% sure. I would love to hear it. Shubhi then narrated the incident. I was inside my house cooking. I was barely left with any time to leave the house. Within seconds, the roof and the walls of my house collapsed, leaving nothing around. The table under which I took shelter was submerged in a sea of rubble. I was crushed and unconscious. Ritwik then added, when she opened her eyes, all she could see was red bottles and plastered arms and legs. The searing pain almost killed her. After she regained her consciousness, I then updated her with the details of the immense ruin caused. That must have been such an awful and horrific experience to go through, Anvika explained. Well, we have heard that India has gone through such dreadful earthquakes in the past. What about the precautions you all take during such earthquakes? Veera asked. Ashwarya explained, there are countless number of provisions that need to be taken care of during an earthquake. Some of them are, stay calm. If you are indoors, stand against a wall near the center of the building. Stand in a doorway or crawl under heavy furniture, a desk or a table. Stay away from windows and outside doors. If you are outdoors, stay away from outside power lines or anything that might fall. Stay away from buildings because stuff from building might fall on you or the building could fall on you. Saksham continued, yes, there are a bunch of precautions that should be followed before an earthquake. Firstly, make a plan and preparation for emergency relief. Secondly, identify the medical centers, fire stations, police stations and organize reef society in your area. Thirdly, check the electric and water shutoff location in your area house. Finally, remember that heavy objects like glasses, cutlery should be kept in lower shelves. In our school, there are numerous provisions that are taken after an earthquake takes place, like hide under the desk, use stairs to go down and find your nearest exit, follow the school's emergency layout. At last but least, run as fast as leopard to go to at that time, the captain of the ship announced, 15 minutes to go and we we'll reach our destination. Hope to see you all soon, said Hayavadan. Adding to it, we said, you guys are lifesaver. Without your kindness and big heart, you wouldn't be able to reach your hometown. Then Anvika said, this trip has been very successful. This trip has not been only educational, that also provided us with some everlasting friendships. The final goodbye, said Saksham. Adding to it, Ashwarya said, Happy journey to you all from here. We will cherish these two days for a very long time.